Hello, how are you? My name is Aisha, and today I'd like to speak to you about blackface. Blackface was used to dehumanize African Americans, and it is still used to this day. Pretty sad and pathetic. This um, article that I'll be reading from is from thehistory.org, and I will leave the um, article in the description box. So here we go. How the history of blackface is rooted in racism. Blackface became popular in the U.S. after the Civil War as white performers played characters that demeaned and dehumanized African Americans. This is American history. This is what was done to you. You didn't do this to anybody else. Blackface performer Dan Bryant circa 1850 because it's so hilarious to make fun of a group of people. The portrayal of blackface. When people darken their skin with shoe polish, grease paint, or burnt cork, and paint on enlarged lips and other exaggerated features is steeped in centuries of racism. It peaked in popularity during an era in the United States when demands for civil rights by recently emancipated slaves triggered racial hostility. So you asking for your freedom all of a sudden <sighs> triggers racial hostility. Hey, can I be free? Hey, no, I don't want you to be free. That's America. And today, because of Blackface's historic use to denigrate people of African descent, its continued use is still considered racist. It's an assertion of power and control, says David Leonard, a professor of comparative ethnic studies and American studies at Washington State University. It allows us a society to routinely and historically imagine African Americans as not fully human. It serves to rationalize violence and Jim Crow segregation. Although the exact moment when blackface originated isn't known, its roots date back to century, centuries old European theatrical productions, most famously Shakespeare's Othello. So even their most famous, famous productions, they just couldn't help but to make fun of us. We're not bothering them. They're still trying to bother us. This is a problem. This is a serious problem. The practice then began in the United States in the 18th century when European immigrants brought the genre over and performed in seaports along the Northeast, says Daphne Brooks, a professor of African-American studies and theater studies at Yale University. But the most famous sort of era to think of as being the birth of the form itself is the antebellum era of the early 19th century, Brooks says. Thomas Dartmouth Rice, an actor born in New York, is considered the father of minstrelsy. After reportedly traveling to the South and observing slaves, Rice developed a black stage character called Jim Crow in 1830. So this man went to the South, observed the people, the only people that were working hard under the sun, being whipped, being brutalized. And he decided that he would make a minstrel show out of it. This is how demons think. Only a savage person, only a demonic person would think, oh my goodness, these people are slaving away and let me make fun of them and put it on TV. Crazy. With quick dance moves and an exaggerated African-American vernacular and buffoonish behavior, Rice founded a new genre of radicalized song and dance, or sorry, racialized song and dance. 
blackface minstrel shows, which became central to American entertainment in the North and South. White performers in blackface played characters that perpetuated a range of negative stereotypes about African Americans, including being lazy, ignorant, superstitious, hypersexual, criminal, and cowardly. So let's go through those stereotypes real fast, since people love to give out stereotypes, especially at this time. African Americans were lazy. They were the only ones pretty much working. They worked from morning to night for other people and didn't get paid. That's, these are the people that they're talking about. Ignorant. Uh, the people that actually were making all, everything. These people could speak fluently. They could work. Not only did they work for free, but these are the same people that were... <sighs> I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> These are the same people that were the inventors. That's, that's the important part of this. They're ignorant, but they were inventing things that you later on patented and put in your name. These are the ignorant people. Superstitious. That's probably because they believe in God. Couldn't believe in anything else. Hypersexual. These are the people that you raped. They're hypersexual, hypersexual right? The people that you raped. Okay. Criminal. They were in the fields, had no time to commit crime, and cowardly. Okay. I think these people knew that they were talking about themselves, but they just couldn't bring themselves to say it, you know? So, okay. Actresses Shirley Temple in blackface and Hannah Washington write in the 1935 film, The Littlest Rebel. Now look at this little black girl's face. She's probably believing, thinking in her mind, like, I don't believe this crap right here. I Imagine having to deal with this kind of crap and not being able to say anything. Several characters in minstrel shows became archetypes. As described in the University of Florida's digital exhibit, History of Minstrels, from Jump Jim Crow to the jazz singer. Some of the most famous ones were Rice's Jim Crow, were Rice's Jim Crow, a rural dancing fool in tattered clothing. The Mammy, an overweight and loud mother figure, and Zip Coon, a flamboyant dressed man who used sophisticated words incorrectly. Oh my God, it's so funny. You guys have such a great sense of humor. Most of the minstrel shows show actors were working class Irish men from the Northeast who performed in blackface to distance themselves from their, o their own lower social, political, and economic status in the United States, says Leonard. So, so we don't have to look at ourselves and see that we're poor and they're treating us the same way we'll make fun of you because that'll get us in good graces. By the way, the Irish were indentured servants. They did it to authenticate their whiteness, he says. It was the same as saying we can become the other and mock the other and assert our superior superiority by dehumanizing the other. Exactly. <laughs> Blackface minstrel shows soared in popularity, in particular during the period after the Civil War and into the start of the 20th century, as documented in the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture's official blackface history. The widespread demeaning portrayals of African Americans paralleled a period when Southern states legislatures were passing black codes to restrict the behavior of former slaves and other African Americans. In fact, the codes were also called Jim Crow laws after the blackface stage character. So it's just funny. Everything's just so funny until it's not anymore, right? As society modernized, 
so did the ways in which blackface was portrayed. Not only was blackface in theaters, but it moved to the film industry. In the blockbuster movie, The Birth of a Nation, a racist ass movie, blackface characters were seen as unscrupulous and rapists. <sighs> Giving everybody else your title again, huh? The stereotypes were all were so powerful, they became a recruiting tool for the Ku Klux Klan. African Americans protested the film's portrayals and its distorted take on the post-civil rights era. Yet it continued, yet it continued to be popular among white audiences because you can't help yourselves. But then to make fun of others, just so funny when you're not in the spotlight, huh? There are different ways in which blackface becomes weaponized as a form of white supremacist propaganda, says Brooks. African Americans also performed in blackface given it was the only way to be in the entertainment industry. But their performances countered some of the primitive representations that were popularized. Black artists Burt Williams and George Walker infused political commentary with their comedic minstrel routines, offering a, a more intelligent representation of African-Americans. But blackface minstrelsy remained a genre heavily dominated by white actors. Al Jolson, a Lithuanian Jewish immigrant who came to New York as a child, became one of the most influential blackface stars in the 20th century, including his 1927 hit film, The Jazz Singer. So everybody's getting in on it. It's just a funny thing, right? The appeal of blackface declined after the 1930s and into the civil rights movement. However, the negative stereotype of African-Americans and mocking of dark skin have persisted in recent decades. For example, blackface appeared in the Oscars ceremony in 2012 on television skits and wearing blackface to dress up as famous African-Americans during Halloween remains as an ongoing issue. Most recently, outrage ensued when Virginia Governor Ralph Northam and the state attorney general, Mark Herring, both admitted in February 2019 to wearing blackface costumes as young men. As Leonard says, blackface is part of the toxic culture of racism. It sure is. There's something wrong with people. For me, I've never, ever thought to put on white shoe polish. I've never thought to make myself in the liking of another person. I've never thought to degrade another human. I make these videos because we need to know our history and we need to know that everybody is just not for you. I don't know why they come against you. I don't know why they are confederate against you. I don't know why everybody wants to bully us. But we're here. I understand that we have issues in our own community, but if you think about it, we don't bother nobody. We don't go out of our way to do this type of shit and then say we didn't know. We don't do any of these things. Yet people just keep poking the bear. And no one is supposed to get irritated, get mad, speak up about it. You're supposed to just sit there and be made fun of and mocked. And you're supposed to just take it. Yet, if you think about it, when this type of thing happens to other people, they need everyone to stop and look at what's happening to them because I can't take it, but black people are just supposed to accept the things that happen to us. 
I don't think of us as victims. I know we're not victims. Like I said, we have issues in our own community. We have issues with ourselves, but we damn sure don't go out of our way to hurt other people, regardless to what the media would like to have other people believe. We have compassion. <laughs> we have compassion enough to not use blackface on any other race. So I appreciate you listening. I thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.